Hey everyone, we are live. Welcome to the live cast tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking about cardiology ALS prep. So last time we talked about something that very sound for BOS. Tonight we're going to walk into a little bit of ALS. Okay, so there's a few sound things we have to go over first. I got my little list over here of what we're going to dive into. And if you're just tuning in, give me a hashtag live. I see we've got people coming on the live cast now. Give me a hashtag live if you're here uh, live. If you're on the replay, uh, give me a hashtag replay down below in the comments. I'm going to hit the chat. Let me hit that real quick. All right. So we have about nine people live here. So coming in so far. Just want to go on 12 and I'm going to start to come in. There we go. So uh, give me a hashtag live if you are live here, everyone. Tonight we're going over cardiology ALS prep. Uh, we're going to be going over EKG basics, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Receptors, epi versus beta blockers. It's going to make sense in a little bit. And we're going to go over about uh, some pearls about uh, just proper electrical conduction of the heart. So that's the main breakdown. So let me do my shout outs as we get started. Hope make sure everyone can hear me. So we got uh, Carly on the live. We got Adam on the live. What's up, brother? We got Fire Fortes on the live. What's up? We got Andre on the live. What's up? We got Justin Yardon on the live. What's up? Natasha, what's going on? Hashtag live. Aaron, hey, what's up, brother? Aaron, uh, congrats again for uh, taking action. Um, we got Jamie. Jamie's our newest member inside. Uh, I think she signed up maybe like 30 minutes ago. Hey, Jamie, so congratulations. Uh, Shiloh, what's going on? So we have a lot of a lot of different mem uh, members on tonight. We have about 20 people live. Give me a hashtag live as you come into the room, okay? We got Tara and Christina. Hey, Christina, what's up? Hey, Tara, what's up? So give me a hashtag live if you're live. Replay if you're on the replay. As I see people coming in, I know they can hear me. Then we can get started. Um, sup from Michigan. Hey, Tara, what's up? Uh, we got Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Rebecca, what's going on? Uh, we got Nico Collins. We got Christina. We have Nicole uh, Nicole as well, looks like. Awesome. All right, cool. So let's dive into tonight's live cast. You ready to roll? All right, give me a hashtag ready. Give me a hashtag ready if you're ready to get this party started. Give me a hashtag ready if you're ready to go. Uh, Rebecca says, I'm next. Rebecca, dive right in, dive right in. Um, so let's dive into it. You all ready? Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a secret. Let's start with a secret, okay? A secret. The first thing that anyone needs to know when you're trying to either, one, you know, go to advanced EMT school or paramedic school is exactly what I'm going to be going over tonight is the, the main basics of it, okay? Is there more? Sure. It's always more. Remember one, day two. But the thing to remember is this stuff right here is stuff I would recommend you go over and know before you go to advanced AMT school, before you go to medical school. So we're gonna dive into that tonight, okay? Let's do it. So we're gonna start here with the basics, and we have to do a quick overview first for this to make sense. We're gonna be going through a lot of different things. I got my little, little notes here. So like stay tuned to the end of this live cast to get all the information, because I'm gonna give you it piece by piece, and at the end, it's all gonna make sense. Okay, let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this. All right. So the first thing we gotta go over, okay, is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. We have to go over this first. If we don't have this piece, nothing else we do is gonna make sense. So let's start with that. So I'm gonna just put my chart up here, okay? So we have a big S here and we have a P. S, uh, a P, S, and S. Okay. P, S, and S. Right. Now, I always start with the nicknames. Why? I start with the nicknames because that's the way I can remember it. Now, watch the correlation I'm going to make here as we go along. You have to know this cold before we can even move on to anything else. We, we can't move on to really much of anything without knowing this. So we got to know this first. So let's do it. So, first we have the fight or flight, okay? That's gonna be our sympathetic. These are the nicknames, okay? Now, 
what could you put as a nickname for the parasympathetic nervous system? Okay. Some people might say it's rest and digest. Some people say it's the, oh man, it's like the after sex response. Okay. Like, oh, I'm so relaxed right now. Okay. Uh, depends how you want to look at it. Okay. I remember both. Okay. But what I can tell you is we use, let's just say rest and digest. Okay. Regardless of the why or the what, what I just think about inside your head, fight or flight, that is like chaos. In chaos, what's going to happen in chaos? Well, I'll probably have a higher blood pressure. I'll probably have a higher heart rate. Okay. If I'm, if I'm relaxed and I'm resting, picture yourself. Well, think about it. Mm. I'm going to be more rested. I'm going to be more calm. My blood pressure is nice and calm. My heart rate is nice and calm. Right? Think about it, okay? So that's why I use these nicknames to start because it does all the work for you, okay? If you notice, it's kind of like a drug card. If you know what it does, you fill in the rest, all right? Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we got here is there's some main parts that we gotta know for each one. So let's start with the heart first, okay? Let's do that. Okay. We got a heart. Okay. What else? Do, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna do eyes. Okay. okay. We're gonna do lungs too. Lungs. Okay. Let's start there. Let's start there, okay? Then we'll move on, okay? So if I'm in fight or flight and I have that response in my body, just knowing that, use your brain. What do you think is going to happen? Well, think about it. Heart rate, my heart rate's going to increase. Okay, then I got that. What's going to happen to my eyes? What's going to happen to my eyes? Well, think about it. If I'm in fight or flight, Okay, what picture me in fight? Okay. Would do I want my eyes, if I'm in a fight, to be constricted or my eyes to be dilated and open? Hmm. Okay. That makes sense. I want them to be open so I can see better. Ah. Is that the answer? It is. Okay. Okay. I want to tell you how you're never, ever, ever going to forget the eyes. Think about it. A patient that has opiate overdose, right? How are their peoples? Pinpoint. How relaxed are they? Very relaxed. It's a game of opposites that I want you to think about, okay? This is not a rule, but I want you to think about a game of opposites, okay? So, for example, if we go to the lungs here, which are going to be the next one, dilate, okay? You're, long, you're not going to have, an, you know, <laughs> problem constriction. You're not going to die, okay? This isn't a rule, but if you think of opposites, you remember, okay? Fair? Does it all make sense as we go along? Pretty cool? Okay, now that we understand this and we got this down pat, we're going to move quickly on to the next step, which we got to know cold. Let's do that next, okay? So we have this. Great. I got it. Now let's move on to the next step, okay? We're going to knock out these first two things first, okay? Because these, these here are going to be the two pearls we got to know, okay? All right, next up. So the next step we're going to talk about here is going to be the three receptors you need to know. Okay. We're not going to have the basics here. Okay. And I'm going to, now, one thing to keep in mind, everyone watching, about, about 30 people on the live cast now, is that we have a mixed audience here. So I have people watching that are new EMTs, 
if you're watching that are EMTs, advanced EMTs, medic students, we have a mixed audience. So I like to keep things at a simple level, but a practical level. I don't want it to go too crazy, right? If I, if I know I'm in front of like a certain group, I like to spread out so everyone understands. From a new EMT will understand it, all the way to a paramedic student. So that's always how I structure my lives, just so you're aware, okay? So three receptors you have to know. By the way, anyone can know this. Just because they teach, I mean, just because uh, in medic school or in advanced EMT school, you're taught this, okay? Doesn't mean that someone new doesn't can't know this. So this is why I'm here. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So there's three receptors you gotta know in EMS. Why? Because so many of the drugs people are either gonna overdose on, or drugs that you give in EMS have to do with this. And this is all gonna make sense, and you're never gonna forget sympathetic or the parasympathetic ever again, you're never ever going to forget the alpha and beta receptors ever again once you know this. You're never going to forget it. It's going to be in your brain like you know what your hand looks like. You just learned the first part. Now we're doing this next part. Let's do it. So let's talk about receptors in the body before we even get into this. Because you're probably, Evan, whoa, what the hell is a receptor, Matt? Let's talk about it. Okay. So This is what I want you to think about, okay? I'll show you. There's all different types of receptors in the body. Just like there's so many different types of drugs, okay? In this case, I'm talking about an alpha-1 receptor, a beta-1 receptor, and a beta-2 receptor. Those are the receptors I'm talking about. There are other receptors in the body, okay? For example, there's a receptor called a mu opioid receptor, the delta opioid receptors, right? There are different types of receptors in the body that we find, okay? These are three we got to know cold for EMS. We can't give any meds without knowing these, okay? These are also going to be on your drug cards as well. So we got to understand these. And once you understand this, everything else comes into place with EMS at all levels. So let's, let's talk about it, okay? Now, a receptor is a site that a drug binds to. Okay, got it, got it, okay. A receptor is a site a drug attaches to, a drug binds to. I give someone epinephrine, their alpha one, beta one, and beta two receptor, the landing site for the medication, okay, like a, like a pad, like a landing pad, it's hit, here's the medicine, and it activates, turns it on, switches it on, okay? That's a receptor, okay? I'm gonna make it simple for everyone watching, okay? Yes, I know there's for a lot of medics who are gonna be watching or medics. Yes, there's partial in the middle. I'm gonna go one or the other, okay? So if we don't know that, we can't even mess around, okay? So, it's, so just, I wanna be clear about that here, okay? I don't wanna confuse anybody who's overthinking this, okay? There's something called an agonist and an antagonist, okay? An agonist is a drug that binds to the receptor site. An agonist is a drug that binds to a receptor site. And now we know what that site is. That site turns the effect on of the receptor. So I'm a drug, I go in, I'm looking around. Where is my receptor? Where the hell is my receptor at? Oh, there's the alpha one. Wait, what's my name again? Epinephrine. Okay, I need alpha one. Okay, I'm the shopping. I need beta one. I need beta two. Okay, okay, let's go. You go there, you go there, you go there. We're all epi, right? Okay, here we go. Doom, doom, doom. And then they bind. Great. That's epi. But what if we give a drug called an antagonist? An antagonist, okay? So an agonist. Example, epinephrine. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense? Makes sense? Okay. What if it was an antagonist? What's that? Think about it. Let me show you. 
Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep it up for you guys so you can see it. So if we have a receptor site, we're normally, that's the site that's going to be activated. So here it is. Okay. Here's my receptor. It's going to be activated. Okay. As an antagonist, think about it. The drug is going to go in, and what is it going to do? It's going to block it off. So no one is going to block it off. So no one's getting on. Okay. It's going to block it off. No one's getting on. It's blocking it off. No one's getting on. That means it can't be activated. Oh, that's not good. Well, if it can't be activated, it might have a different effect. Remember that. Okay, I'm blocking it. Well, it wasn't blocked before, but now it is. Oh, you might have a different effect. Okay. okay. That's your antagonist. Okay. Now, let's continue on to the next step here. Okay. Now that we know an agonist and an antagonist, let's keep going. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. So let me see what we got going on here. Let's see here. We got some hashtag ready, hashtag ready. We got some tags here from Hannah. We got Tara, hashtag ready, hashtag ready, hashtag ready. I'm next. Love the information. Thank you. Uh, hashtag ready, hashtag live, hashtag ready, hashtag ready. Just tuned in and ready. Timmy, RD. Have to watch the replay. Thanks for the great info. You got it. Hashtag ready. Over your lack some points. Hashtag live, hashtag live, hashtag EMS. Let's go. Ready. Everyone watching live, give me a hashtag live down below. Let's do it. All right. So the next thing we we'll talk about here is we're going to talk about alpha one, beta one, and beta two. Here we go. Okay. So now that we understand our receptor sites and we got that down, okay. Now what we're going to do is say, okay, in medicine, what happens to a person when alpha one gets stimulated? What happens? We get vasoconstriction, okay? Okay, we get vasoconstriction when alpha one gets activated. Hey, what's vasoconstriction? What does that mean? Okay, let's sit, let's break it down. Vaso, the vasculature, okay? The vasculature, we know, we got arteries, we got veins, right, the vasculature, okay? Constrict, they get constricted, okay? Dilate, constrict. You gotta know these words. Dilate, constrict. Got it? Okay. So alpha one, now think about it. You gotta know this, you gotta know this, okay? If my blood pressure goes up, my arteries clamp down. That's why people say, hey, your blood pressure is too high, it looks like you're gonna have a stroke. Hey, your blood pressure is 200 over 100. You're going to have a stroke. You're, you're so clamped down. You're, you're going to burst a blood, a blood vessel. That's why people say that. Okay. Now think about the opposite. A patient in septic shock where their body is like, oh, I can't even do anything. I'm just going to open everything right up. That's the opposite. That's, okay? That's vasodilatation. Open. We know that. Okay. Got it. Good. So vasoconstriction is going to increase my blood pressure. Got it. Okay. So we got that. We're going to beta one. Okay. When I activate beta one, when a beta one agonist enters the body, you're going to increase your heart rate. Okay. All right. When a beta 2 agonist enters the body, you're going to bronchodilate, open up the lung fields, open up the bronchi, the bronchioles, you're going to open them up. The bronchioles are going to open up. Okay? So, oh, so I'm going to put open lungs. Okay? Here's how we're going. we got to start simple. So this is very simple. Alpha 1, increased blood pressure. Beta 1, Increase heart rate. Beta 2 opens lungs. Okay, great. Now, here's the next step. What drugs do we carry that act on these things? Epi acts on all three. See, if I didn't go over this yet, depending on what drug you have, 
okay? I'll give you an example. Epinephrine acts on alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2, which means, excuse me, <laughs> which means that epi is going to increase your blood pressure, increase your heart rate, and open up your lungs. Right. So what about albuterol? What's that going to do? Albuterol is, does not act in the alpha. So that's gone. Okay, no alpha. Albuterol acts on the beta receptors. But I got to tell you something about the beta receptors that you might not know. So hang tight, okay? Hang tight, okay? Albuterol's goal, we give it, give it albuterol, asthma patient, tight lungs. I want to open their lungs up. Great, great job. Now, the thing is, why did albuterol also cause your heart rate to go up? Why is that? Here's why. Okay. Albuterol opens up your lungs because it acts on beta 2. But here's the secret. When you activate one of the beta receptors, they're twins, they're brothers, they're sisters, they're together, they're both beta receptors. So it doesn't matter how the drug is made. If you are trying to activate beta 2, you're still going to get a little nip of beta 1. And that's why when we give a patient albuterol, they, they get tachycardic. That's why. Now you know why. Okay? So watch me here, and I hope you can hear me. Hope this makes sense. Okay? If you have questions down below about this, please let me know. I'm going to scroll through in a second. Which I'm on a little wrap up, okay? Think about it. Think. Beta one increases your heart rate. Beta two opens your lungs. Right. I give out I give out butyl to a patients. I open their lungs, but they also get tachycardic. What happens if I do the opposite and I block the beta receptors and I block them? What's gonna happen? The opposite. Remember before when I talked about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic? See, once we understood the, these opposites, it also happens here as well. And now it makes sense because you already kind of get it, kind of, oh, opposite. Right? See? Okay. Now look, the beta receptors, if I block beta 1 with a drug like metaprolol, metaprolol goes in the body, and here's what it does. It tries its best. The drug was made to be selective to go after beta 1 in the body. But don't forget the tip. If I block beta 1, I'm going to end up blocking a little bit of beta 2 because they're friends. They're brothers. They're sisters. They're together. So what does that mean? That means, my friends, if you go to a patient who has asthma, who has COPD, okay, who has chronic lung disease or tightening of the lungs, or any, or I mean, I mean it, it would make sense. I, th I think it would make sense. Let me know what you think in the comments. I, I never, actually never thought about this before, to be honest with you. Um, this, what I'm about to tell you right now, um, I'm very curious about this. What would happen to a patient who was in anaphylaxis and they had wheezing and they were taking a beta blocker? Would that make them worse? Understanding this, maybe. I know with asthma it would, and that was the whole point of saying that, but I just thought about that. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting to, to, to research. But it makes sense knowing this in my brain, and maybe that's the way you remember it. But here's the thing. I've been called to calls where somebody who has an asthma history, they just got prescribed a new beta blocker because they had another problem, but the doctor had to give this drug to test it out, and they have an asthma attack. Why? Because you know this. The doctor was using metaprolol to try to block beta-1. But instead, it happens, too much of that beta-2 effect entered, and now the opposite happens. We block beta-2. If When we activate it, it opens. We block it. We get a little constriction. Watch out for beta blockers in asthma patients. Okay? That's the pearl. All right? So that's that. I'm going to take the comments. Let me see if we got any questions about this stuff. We have more on the board to go over. We're going to dive into EKGs, okay? So just see where we're at here, okay?
So I'm going to see you. any questions here. Okay. So Nicole Watkins says, most definitely makes sense. Thank you. Now, Mr. Gator 33. Hey, what's up, brother? Well, when you open the lungs, wouldn't that cause, well, when you open the lungs, wouldn't that cause your heart rate to increase through needing to fill the lungs more? So that's a, I guess that's a fair point, but that's not the way that I've ever thought about it. Not the way that I've ever taught about it or anything like that. Um, the way that you should think about it is like this, uh, Mr. Gator is beta 2, when it's stimulated, is going to open up the lungs, okay? There's a crossover effect, so I'll, I think I can even draw it for you if you want. You can see that, you can, okay? So here's beta 1, here's beta 2, okay? There's a cross in the middle right here. The full effect is right here, right? So if I act on beta 2, okay? I get a full effect and I get a little partial effect on beta one. Okay. If I, if I act on beta one as my main source, what's going to happen? Full effect beta one, I'm going to get a little partial effect of beta two. That's the pro I want you guys to know about. Okay. So we just, so now we know epinephrine. Now, what's the pro I'm going to give you now? Use your brain. What I hope you learned tonight so far is. If I know what a drug does, I can fill in the entire drug card. So I'm just gonna talk just straight to the camera here. I mean, I'll just tell you, think about it. Just you will use what you learned. Epinephrine, we know what it does. We know it's got alpha one, beta one, and beta two effects. It's gonna open up your lungs. It's gonna increase your heart rate. And then alpha one is gonna vasoconstrict, right? Right. So what does that mean? That means patients that are hypotensive, right? In certain situations, a hypotensive patient, an epi drip via IV, that makes sense, right? All right. A patient has a slow heart rate. Could epi work? It could. It could. Is it, is it a first line? No, but it could work. What about opening the lungs? Does epi open the lungs? Wait a second. Is that why we give it for anaphylaxis? Is that why we give it for asthma? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Now you know why. At an expert level. They teach you this first semester of med school. Maybe EMTs. Maybe you weren't in class. But if you didn't know it, now you know it. And this is the why behind it. Fair? Okay. So think about albuterol. It acts on beta 2, right? Right. Opens the lungs. Why would we give it? Somebody who has closed closed lungs. Right. <laughs> See? And then all you do with the indication is you flip it. So now you know. What's a contraindication? What, 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 actually, I'm sorry. What would be a special consideration with albuterol? Tachycardia. How badly does that patient need the albuterol? If they're a super tacky, watch out. They might get more tacky. You see where I'm going? Okay. Now you're done. All right. So now we're going to move on. Let's move in to EKG basics. Ready? Okay. Now, before I move on, I just want to tell you guys something real quick. Where did I get all this? Like, where did I get this? these lessons from? Uh, let me tell you a quick story. So I had a lot of – there's a time in my career – I had a lot of people in the ambulance that were coming to me that were brand new EMT recruits. And you know, I was the paramedic on the ambulance. They were the EMT. And that's how really, this, this is really how it all started. I kept getting new EMTs as my partner. And I kept training them up from a new EMT. It just got cleared to, you know, becoming great EMTs. And that's how the paramedic coach actually really started. So a lot of these training lessons that I do on the live cast, stuff like that, this, this would be like a training lesson that I would give to a brand new EMT that got cleared. You know, hey, you want to learn more? Let's talk about it. We'd go in the back of the ambulance. We'd go, you know, we'd go through stuff. We'd go through NEBS. We'd go through EKGs. We're in EKGs right now. We'd take the paper out. We'd go through. I'd show them the 12 weeks, you know. Um, so that's what we did. That's what we did. So that's where a lot of these lessons, the ideas come from, like in-field uh, stuff. Ready? Let's do it. So we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the next step. Here we go. All right, let's roll. 
Y'all having fun? Give me a hashtag ready if you're ready for the next one. Let's do it. Okay. So now we're going to go over is going to be our next step. I think, I think I'm, you guys ready for EKGs? I think so. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do EKGs. Now, before we can do EKGs, we got to know something first. Before we can do EKGs, we got to know something first. Okay. Let's talk about it. Here we go. Okay. This is going to be an awareness overview of the electrical conduction of the heart. Okay. This is going to be an overview of the electrical conduction of the heart. Okay. A basic overview. So you can understand it. Okay. Once you can understand it, then I can move on to the next thing, which is going to be wave recognition at a basic level. We're going to cover that. Okay. And then we're going to simply, simply cover for everybody watching, okay, is when you're on shift, when you're on shift and you're looking and your medic prints out EKG, what the hell are you looking at? <laughs> okay. So that's what we're going to be covering next. Okay. Let's talk about it. So here we go. Here's the heart. Okay. Here's the heart. So the first thing you need to realize about the heart is there's a split here. There's a toll booth of the heart. We're going to put right in the middle. Okay. We're going to put it right in the middle. Okay. It goes by a lot. Of, it goes by a lot of different names. Okay. You could call it the toll booth. You can call it the halfway point. You can call it whatever you want. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. Okay. Right in the middle here is going to be the AV node. Whoa. What's that? Think about it. It's right in between the atria and the ventricles. AV, that makes sense. Good, okay? Bear with me here, guys, okay? You know, it's all gonna make sense. I'm splitting it, this heart in half, okay? And then I want you to think of this way, this arrow, this is where the electrical conduction's going, okay? The way that, I always say the way I remember it, okay? So the way that I remember it, in my head, it might not make sense, perfect sense, but it's the way I remember it, so I don't forget it. If this is the heart, all right? So let's say like my, my ventricle is down here, okay? And then the, the right atria is like up here. I think about, in my brain, I think of it going down like this, the, the, the conduction. Because blood first kind of comes in from the right atria. So it reminds me how it goes. It doesn't go up, it goes it's going to go down the conduction, down into the ventricles. Okay? So that's how I remember. I go, okay, well, blood was in the right atria. So wouldn't it make sense if it just went down slope to the left ventricle? Like that, like that might make sense to me. Like it starts up here, the right atria, the, the, the left conduction, then it slopes down to the left ventricle. Oh, that, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Okay. I can I can remember that. That's how I remember it. Okay. So the first thing you do is you split your heart in half. Right in the middle is something called the AV node. We're going to put it right on the line, okay, the AV node, okay? Okay, now I'm going to start drawing a few things out here, okay? So bear with me. Okay, pretty cool. Okay. So here we go, here we go. All right, so we got a few hashtag readies, hashtag ready, hashtag ready, hashtag ready. Okay, awesome. Right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is the first easiest step. Now, what's my goal with this? What's my goal with this? My goal with this is to take somebody who's getting ready for max school to understand the basics. Okay, the basics here. Okay, I want you to get the main parts. Okay, I don't want you to get crazy with every single detail, but I want you to know the main parts first. Fair? Is that fair? Okay, let's do it. So, and this is the way that I, this is the way that I teach it to someone who's just starting out. Okay, here we go. 
the normal pathway of the way this is going to work, okay, is going to be, we start here at what's called the SA node, okay? We come down here to the AV node, okay? We go, then we move on to the next one. Right here is going to be the bundle of Hiss, okay? What's going to split up next? The bundle branches, okay? We've heard that before. Bundle branches, we've heard that before. We're going to talk about it. And at the bottom, it's going to be our Purkinje fibers, okay? Okay. You got to know that first. These are the main players. So let's say we let's say we were playing a basketball game. These are the these are the starting five. We got to know these people. We don't know these people, then we can't we can't move on. We can't do anything uh, else. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. So here is the SA node. This is where the impulse starts. Okay. Number one. Here's our AV node. It's all going to make sense in a sec, guys. Okay. Bundle of fists. Bundle branches, Purkinje fibers. Now notice, up here is all atria. Down here is all ventricles. Okay, split in the middle by this toll booth of the heart, this AV node. Okay, okay. Now, here's what happened to a normal heart. Okay, let's say we have a patient with a sinus rhythm, okay? The normal rate is gonna be 60 to 100, okay? For a normal patient, right? Right. So if the, if the impulse starts like it should and goes down the pathways and a full conduction is done, a full EKG is done, okay? 60 to 100. Okay. Okay. Now, what if something happens? What if something happens, and the SA node? I'm gonna put my hand over it, and the SA node doesn't work out too well. What's gonna happen? The SA if, if the SA node doesn't work out, you're gonna go down with the heart rate. So the impulse starts at the junction, the AV node the heart rate's gonna be slower. It's gonna be slower, okay? So I'm gonna put it up here, 40 to 60 about, okay? Okay? What happens, again, I call these the big three, okay? I have my hand over all this, okay? What happens if the impulse starts down here in the ventricles? What's the heart rate gonna be? 20 to 40, okay? 20 to 40. Okay, as in, in a normal circumstance. So what does this mean? I'm gonna give you a gem here, just keep it. Just keep it in your head, okay? So people that are transitioning from EMT to medic, keep it in your head. This is my goal, to give you an awareness of these things here, okay? Get an awareness, so watch. SA node, the impulse starts there, that's gonna be your sinus rhythms, okay? We're gonna get, get there in a second, okay? If the impulse starts here, just put this in your head. If it, if it starts in this area right here, in that junction, there's something called a junctional rhythm. Do you know what the normal heart rate of a junctional rhythm is? It's about 40 to 60. Okay? Then you have a rhythm, okay? That's called a ventricular rhythm, okay? But when the impulse starts in the ventricles, down here, all the way below down here, okay, and it's a normal one, it's a, it's a normal, okay, normal ventricular rhythm, okay, it's 20 to 40, okay, okay. So now we got this down. The reason I share this with you, and again, we have a mixed audience here, I don't want to get too crazy or advanced, okay, I want to keep it simple and give you an awareness, okay. I'll give you a half amount of awareness. This is your EKG awareness, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about here, now that we get this and see this, is what are the main players when we talk about EKG waves? Because now if, if, I know, if I know this when I'm talking to a medic, that's pretty cool. I have a good awareness. Let's get some more awareness, and we're going to build up and build up and build up.
Remember, we're on day two, okay? So I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna build up, okay? I just want you to understand that first, okay? So now what I wanna show you to get more awareness of what's going on is gonna be the waves, okay? The waves, let's talk about it, okay? So now what we're gonna have here is I'm gonna draw out what the EKG would look like, okay? What it would look like, okay? I have a YouTube video as well if you're watching on YouTube or you're not on YouTube. Um, it's called EKGs. I go through like all the EKGs in one video on YouTube to check that out, okay, after this. And you'll probably be like, holy shit. <laughs> now I, this makes a lot of sense. So that would be uh, something I would have you follow up with. Go watch that video, okay? So now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna draw a straight line, okay? On the EKG paper, you have a straight line, okay? What I'm gonna do right now is just tell you what the normal waves look like. So when you're with your medic, you can see here and go, oh, I think that, that looks like a normal, this is an, all the waves are there, this, this bad boy normal? I just wanna share this with you. Again, tonight's lesson is something I took from what I would teach an EMT student who's about to get ready to medic school. Last night was EMT review. So now we're at EMT, we're thinking about going to medic school. Tomorrow night we're gonna get more advanced, and we're gonna move into full ALS, okay? Each night we move farther and farther. We're here, we're gonna go here, okay? Cool. So we have the isoelectric line here, okay? This is the straight line you see on an EKG. This line here is where you base every single thing you do off of, okay? I just wanna draw it out. Is it, you'll see, we'll see. That main straight line, that's the line you base everything off of. Just remember that in your head, okay? Just remember that in your head, okay? All right. So now what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna draw some stuff. So let me draw it out, okay? Here we go. So we had a few players at this event, and let's go through the main players so you understand the players at the game, okay? If you're thinking about moving forward, let's talk about the players. Here we go. So here is your normal EKG setup. Here's our line, okay? Isoelectric line, okay? It's a little, a little off. I'll try to straighten that baby up. There it is, okay? So now, we have to talk about positive deflections and negative deflections. Say it again, positive deflections and negative deflections off this line right here. What does that mean? What that means is if we have a wave that goes points up, it's a positive deflection. If the wave points down, like pointing this way, it's a negative deflection. That's what it means, okay? So what this means is the first wave is the first positive deflection on an EKG. And I'm gonna draw it out and we're gonna talk about what it is. It's actually pretty easy, so let's, let's do it, okay? So we have our first wave here, okay? I'm gonna come down here, come up here, come down here, come down here, come up here, go here, bam. Okay, here we are, okay? Here we are, okay? Now, the first wave here as I go across, is gonna be what's called the P wave, P wave, okay? P as in Peter, P wave. This wave right here. Oh, and by the end of tonight, we're gonna to go through all these. And you're gonna know what they do and why they're there, and some quick tips, okay? A P wave. Huh? Next wave is the Q wave. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that damn Q wave, okay? Next is the R wave. Here we are. Okay, R, okay. S, okay. T, T as in Tom. So we got P as in Peter, we got Q as in, who knows, who knows, we could do Q, Q as in quilt, I guess. <laughs> R is in Roger, S is in Sam, and T is in Tom. Okay? What do you guys call a Q? I don't know. <laughs> a quilt. 
I can't think of anything good for Q. I've never heard any any other ambulance company with the Q as their letter. So I have no idea what the Q what the what the Q would be in the radio. I think I ever had an ambulance with a Q in the radio uh, tones. Quebec. Oh, there it is. Quebec. There you go. Nice, nice brother. Nice. So we got P. Okay, we got P. All right. Q R S T. Okay. So the first thing about the P, the first thing about the P is this is what's called atria depolarization. Evan, what the Evan, what the heck? Evan, you lost me. What the hell are you talking about? Evan, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> All right, let's talk about it, okay? Look, here's a heart, right? We got atrias, we got ventricles. Remember the way I have you remember this. This is the way I remember it, so I give it to you. Who gets the blood first? Atria, right? Right. So wouldn't it make sense that the atria would be the first wave in the EKG? That makes sense to me. Okay, good. Now, what the hell does depolarize mean? What the does that mean? I want you to change that word out. Change it to goes off. Change it to fires. Okay, we know it though. Depolarization means it's the atrius turn to fire. Think of a cannon, it's firing off. Okay? That's what I want you to think about. So the atria, when it depolarizes, it's its turn to go. It's its turn to come on stage. Atria, you're up. Here I am. I'm ready. I'm in the atria. What, what's up? I'm on, here I am. I'm on stage. Okay? That's what we're going to do with the atrias. So the word depolarize has to do with, hey, you're up, atria. It's your turn. Here we go. You're up. Repolarize has to do with Think about the word rest, the R, rest or relax, okay? So think, when I, and this will make sense in a second. <clears throat> when I say depolarize, right? It's your turn to fire, shoot the cannons. Think about it like that. When I say repolarize, that means rest, relax. You're off the stage, okay? Make, that makes sense? Okay, look. The P wave represents the atria depolarizing. It's the atria's turn to fire. They fire. It's their turn to go. Third turn. Boom. Okay. What is the QRS complex? This is a complex. Okay. So there's three waves here, but they're all friends. So P and you want to you want to learn a great a great way to remember these waves. I'm going to give it to you. The P wave hates the T wave. The T wave hates the P wave. They're rivals. They don't like each other. They're not, they hate each other. So, God had to put a QRS complex in between them both, this tall, large wave in between them so they don't fight. That's how you remember it. The P wave hates the T wave. The T wave hates the P wave. So, God made a QRS complex, this tall ass wave, to block them. Look how short they are. They can't get over the wave. That's how you remember it from now on. You're not, how, could you, how could you forget it with, with something like that? Right? The P hates the T. T hates the P. There's a huge QRS complex in between. They don't fight. Okay? That's how I teach people. Okay? Now, the P wave represents the atria depolarizing or firing. The QRS complex has to do with the ventricles. It's their turn to fire now. It's their turn to fire. The QRS complex represents the ventricles firing. They're on stage. They're up. Okay. What does the T wave represent? The T wave represents the ventricles actually relaxing. We call that repolarizing. Okay. All right. So, Evan, you're telling me P wave is atria fires, depolarizes. The QRS complex represents the ventricles depolarizing or firing, going off. Okay. And the T wave represents the ventricles repolarizing. Oh, I'm so relaxed right now. The atria, what? They, 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 they never get to relax. You're just going, 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 going. 
the atria never relaxes, it's just always on, it's always on, ready to go? No. The thing is, and here's how you remember it. Remember our, remember our QRS complex that had to be built because the P wave hates the T wave? Remember that? Well, look, this wave was so big to block these two people that the atria repolarization is hiding inside of that QRS complex. You can't see it. You can't see it. You, there is no way that represents atria repolarization. It's hiding in the QRS complex. That's how you remember it. Make it simple. Make it simple. Okay? Make it simple. That's it. Okay? If you know that, which you now know, you're here. Okay? Going into med school, people are going to be sitting there in class because they're going to have a test on this in five days, three days, four days, two days. And they're going to be stressed about it. You already know it now, months ahead. I'm assuming you probably start in August or September. Okay? That's when most medics will start. Okay? Cool. Now, what else do we got to know here, though? There's more than just the waves. There's intervals and there's segments we got to know. Okay? Let's talk about these segments. Okay? I'm going to give you quick tips about of these things as well. So now I want to give you some quick tips, okay? In no particular order. But first, I gotta do a little more labeling. Let's label first, okay? So, you, it's a little small, but I'm gonna do my best, okay? So the next thing, I'm gonna just insert these. I'm gonna insert them, okay? There's an interval called the PR interval. There's an interval called the PR interval. Think where it might go. Right here. Shoop. Goes right here. PR interval. Okay. See our line right here? Watch. See our line right here? PR interval. Okay. Hang on. We have one more line. It's called the ST segment. Okay? The ST segment. Okay? Now here is the pro you got to know. There's a point right on the corner here. I'm going to try to draw it out. Right here. Right here. Okay? I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and go like that. See it? Right there. Actually, it moves a little closer to you guys. I'm going to move this in a little bit so you can see. A little better? Cool. EKG, you want to do a little, like, a little closer up. I don't mind if I'm a little out of it. I'd rather have you guys see a little better. So... The next thing here that we're going to talk about is this thing called a J point. Okay. This right here is called a J point. Why is that important? We're going to talk about it. Okay. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Okay. You got to know this before we can move on to tomorrow's lesson. You got to know this before we can move on to tomorrow's lesson. Okay. The next thing, now we're going to talk about one more thing, okay? Can these waves be different? Can these waves disappear? And what does that mean? Yes, that means something. That means something. I'm going to give you a rapid fire quick tip about some of these waves and what it might mean, okay? Again, we have a mixed audience, but I just want to give you some quick tips, okay? I'm just kind of skipping around here, but I want to give you some quick tips before we take off because tomorrow we're moving to step number three. Step number three is we're going to get more in-depth on some of this stuff, and we're also going to get in some 12 weeks tomorrow. But I want to finish up with some quick tips that you might not know about, okay? Now, 
This is where everybody in the whole entire world messes up with EKGs. And I, hey, even I did it. I've done it too. Don't do it because you might get burned. Okay. This line right here, before the P wave, okay, is the isoelectric line. This is the line we use to diagnose heart attacks, to diagnose all, whatever, okay? This is our main straight line. This is not the isoelectric line. This is the PR interval here. This is part, it's part of the PR interval. Do not look at the PR interval. My medics, I'm giving you a quick tip before I go. Do not look at the PR interval and look right across to your ST segment. You need to go back to this line here or go, or go here, this line over here. Because that's the isoelectric line. This is part of the ST. This is your PR. But so many people get so close, they go like this. Some of you may not know what that means yet, but it's okay. 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 Do not do that. Use your isoelectric here to look over here. Can I tell you why? I'm going to give you a few quick tips about these waves. Okay. Ready? We talked. Just plant these in your head. Quick tips. Okay. What happens if this PRI is depressed, meaning it look, this line here goes down here like this. It's below the isoelectric line. That can be a sign of pericarditis. That can be a sign of pericarditis, okay? PR depression, that's why I'm telling you. I don't want you to get burned. I want you to misdiagnose or look at things wrong. PR depression is a sign of pericarditis. Okay, so I don't want you to look here when you're doing your STs. Now, again, for my new EMTs, don't worry. We're going to go over this tomorrow for fun, okay? So what else can I tell you? Hey, another quick tip before I go. See this Q wave here? This Q wave right here is not present in every human. This Q wave can either be narrow and can be wide. Now, if it's a wide Q wave, that could mean you had a heart attack in the past. You have a wide Q wave. That means you could, you may have had a heart attack in the past. So someone goes, oh man, he's got a wide Q wave. That means you could be having a heart attack. You could have had a big heart attack in the past. But guess what? You cannot have a Q wave. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way the EKG is. Not everyone has a Q wave. Quick tip. Okay, what else? This ST segment right here is where we diagnose heart attacks, okay? You may have heard of a STEMI, the word STEMI before. A STEMI is an ST elevation MI. The ST segment is elevated like up here. So the EKG would look like this, basically. I mean, you're on. Okay, so if you look, here's the isoelectric line over here. I'm gonna go straight across. And then here's the J point. See the J point? All the way up here. So that could mean, depending on other factors, it's an MI. I just want you to get that. I'm not gonna go in depth, I just want you to get that, okay? My goal here is to give you a level of awareness that you did not have before this live. That's my goal. You can speak in conversations. You can have a, a level of awareness. That was my goal with our step two tonight. Okay? Get a level of awareness. Okay? Now, what if this right here is depressed? What does that mean? So it looks like this. See the points right here? Here's the line. We're down up, so it'd be like, it would be like this. Sorry. So it's like down here. Okay, 
if your if your J point is below the isoelectric line, that can be a sign of ischemia. The heart's being choked. It's not a full clot. It's being choked. Ischemia. Another sign of ischemia on an EKG is a T wave. Okay, I'm giving you quick tips here. This right here, the T wave being flipped like this, could mean a sign of ischemia, the heart being choked. Remember, could be. All the things I talked about are not rules. They're not rules. There's other factors at play, but it could be. So now I'm going to give you to my EMTs. And I want to finish this up saying why I taught the lecture the way I did tonight and why I went over these specific things. Because I get so many EMTs that want to help out their medic, that want to understand something, have an awareness. My goal tonight was for you to get an awareness of these things. That was my goal. Take you from no awareness no awareness to having an awareness. That was my goal. So now when you hear, oh, man, they got some foot T waves. Wait, is that is that ischemia? Are they, they, do, I need, do I need to give them oxygen? Is, they, what's going on? Oh I'm, see, oh, I'm seeing some SC depression in, in these leads. Oh, they have some ischemia going on, you're saying. Oh, I'm seeing some ST elevation in, in, in these leads. Are they having, are they having a heart attack? Oh, the, they get a pretty wide Q wave. Hey, heart attack in the path? Look how sharp you look. Look how sharp you look. See? See? That, and this, this is my goal with this tonight. Okay? Right? This is my goal with this tonight. Get you to be a go-to sharp provider. So, I'm going to catch all of you on the next live cast tomorrow night. 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to take all this, bring it together, and go an inch farther. And go an inch farther. Hey, everyone, I want to thank you so much uh, for tuning in to tonight's live cast. This was day two of our three days going over cardiology, BLS to ALS. My whole goal here is, hey, if you are someone who's going from BLS to ALS, that you're going to get a good level of awareness in cardiology. Um, from these videos. That was my goal. I hope I hit that goal for you tonight. Hope you learned something new. I hope you learned something that on your next 911 call, the next call that you have, um, that you're able to take that quick tip or take that little pearl and impact someone out in the field. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock Eastern, Facebook, YouTube. Y'all are awesome. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you soon.